On this week's episode of A Drier Dose of Disney, Jared shares his rope drop strategy to do both Universal Parks in the same day in Orlando. Welcome to another episode of A Dryer Dose of Disney. I'm your host, Jared Dryer, and today we've got your rope drop episode for Universal Orlando. And this is one that I know a lot of people have been asking about because we talk about in our other episodes how we can do both parks in the same day. This is the one time out of all of the Disney and Universal parks that I would recommend getting a park to park ticket, AKA a park hopper type ticket, where you can go between the two parks because you can totally do both of these parks together in one day. Now, of course, if you've got more time to spend at Universal where you can do a couple days, the cost of doing a two day ticket is very close to the cost of doing a single park to park ticket. So I would recommend get a two day ticket, spend one day in each of the parks, really explore them try all the different foods and ride all the different rides. But if you wanted to blitz through and get both parks done in one day because you're spending so much time over at Disney, you can totally do that. So we're gonna talk you through what does that look like. Now, one of our disclosures right out of the gates is there's a lot of ways uh, to do rope drop strategies at all the parks and not any of them is better than the others really with the exception of we're going to give you an example of how to save some time at the parks and how to do it a little bit quicker uh, so that'll help but you can really go through and do these in any order that you like just be warned that some of the rides are very long queues over at universal and you could be spending quite a bit of time over there and we've seen the crowd levels just be a little bit higher at Universal than we do at Disney. They don't cap them the same way. They're welcoming everyone that they can. They do eventually reach capacity, but that typically only happens during the summer or during the Christmas holiday. So outside of that, you're not going to really run into the capacity level things that you would over at Disney where the park is fully booked. But at Universal, there are no reservations, so you can pretty much go whenever. Since this is part of a series, this is our fifth episode of Rope Drop out of a total of eight total episodes, because next we're going to be going over to the West Coast and covering the Anaheim Disney Parks as well as Universal Hollywood. Uh, so we do ask, please subscribe wherever you're listening to us. So if you're on a podcast, just click that subscribe button. Or if you're over on YouTube where you're watching us on video, uh, click subscribe there as well. And the content will be delivered to you every single Tuesday when we drop our next episodes. And if you're watching us on video, you get to see my extra cool shirt today today, my 1.21 gigawatt shirts that I got uh, from Universal, and I absolutely love this shirt, so it's one of my favorites to wear whenever I'm talking about Universal. The most important thing that you want to be thinking about when you're doing rope drop is you want to be thinking about what's the most important attraction that I need to ride today? Are my kids big Harry Potter fans? Or are they big Marvel fans? Or is there a certain movie that they absolutely love? For example, when our daughter was younger, she absolutely loved E.T. And in fact, we named our uh, miniature schnauzer here, Gertie, after Drew Barrymore's character in E.T. because of how much my daughter loved that movie. And uh, we watched it all the time. So when we were taking her when she was younger, we, of course, went to E.T. the ride and made sure we rode that a couple times during the day because it was one of her most favorite things. And she was younger. She was little, so she didn't get the chance to ride all the bigger rides. If you have little kids, I do recommend go listen to our Child Swap episode, which is already live because we recorded it and published it before this one. The Child Swap at Universal is a key element, especially if you have little kids. There are a lot of really big, cool rides at Universal that the little kids can't always ride, but Universal does Child Swap better. So we definitely encourage you to go check that out. And then through that episode, Child Swap, uh, Single Riders, because we're going to spend a lot of time talking about Single Riders today, and our Rope Drop episode, if you found a way to save some time, save some money, and you thought, man, that helped me out a lot, please support us over at Patreon. You can go check us out there at A Dryer Dose of Disney, and you can either become a subscriber, which will give you access to our Butterbeer episode, and we are going to be talking Butterbeer today since we're at Universal, or our How to Go to Disney for Almost Free episode. Uh, those are available to our subscribers. But if you don't want to subscribe, that's okay. If you can just throw us a couple dollars here or there, that will help keep this podcast going. So when you're thinking about your strategy, we just talked about if you have a must ride, think about going after that. Outside of that, I do want to say that this uh, method that I'm going to give you today, there's only one method. It has been tested time and time again. In fact, this is what we do regularly when we go to Universal. And our uh, season passes at Universal in Orlando 
are good any day of the year. And our Disney passes, if you've heard us talk about those, are the Pixie Pass, which are only good Mondays through Fridays and in off seasons. So when we're out in Orlando and it's the weekend, we're going to Universal. And the weekends are the busiest time. So trust me when I say we do Universal a lot. In fact, we do those parks as much as we do the combined four parks of Disney. And we are usually going on the weekends where it's busier. So this strategy will work for you. If you are a resort guest at Universal, you are going to get into the park early during the summer hours. So we encourage you to use that uh, time there because that's going to be time with fewer people in the park. Obviously, you're going to be able to knock out quite a few of the bigger rides, but your strategy is going to be exactly the same as what I'm going to share with you guys today for the rest of the park and the rest of the guests that are going in there. So you always want to make sure at Universal, arrive early, have plenty of time to get through parking, get through security and getting into the park. And you do have to walk quite a ways from the parking garage to get all the way to the two parks because you're going to go all the way through City Walk. And we're going to tell you as you go through City uh, Walk, you're going to want to go to the left and go towards Islands of Adventure because that's where you're going to start your day. There was a time when we did start the day briefly over at Universal Studios and went to the right, and that was right when Escape from Green Gots opened. However, with the newest rides that are over at Universal, which include Hagrid's Motorbike and the Velocicoaster, you are going to want to go to Islands of Adventure first now. That's going to be the strategy today is go to Islands of Adventure. When you go into Islands of Adventure, you're going to immediately want to go in and go to the right and go through the Dr. Seuss land, and uh, that's where Rope Drop's going to be. So they're going to take you through most of Dr. Seuss land. You're going to get to towards the back of it, and they're going to have you stop there if you're a regular guest and you're not staying on resort. When you're going in there, there are two paths. You can either go through the main Dr. Seuss land, or you can immediately cut to the left and go to the left of the Green Eggs and Ham Shack and get around by the waterfront over there and get closer to the rope. Uh, that's the side we usually go to. It is in the sun, so do know that it's going to be hot. It's going to be sunny, especially if it's in the summer months. If it's later in the year or during the early spring, it may be a little bit overcast or it may be a little bit more pleasant. But during the summer, you're going to be out in the hot. And you're going to be in the sun waiting for rope drop to happen. Once rope drop happens, it is a mad dash for Hagrid's motorbike. That is where everybody's going to go. That is one of the longest queues. That ride also has a tendency to break down. As you've heard from our other rope drop episodes, we talk a lot about if you're in Florida, you want to try to avoid the sun and you want to avoid the rain. And that's a key reason to go to Hagrid's motorbike first is it is an outdoor coaster. And as soon as the rain comes in the afternoon, you are going to start losing the ability to ride that. So we definitely say you do want to follow the crowd, go after Hagrid's motorbike. Now, the regular queue, there's the, you have the traditional queue that everyone's going to go into, and they are going to advertise really long wait times. Know that the longest we've ever waited is two hours, 120 minutes. They're going to tell you it's 240 minutes. It's not going to be that long. They're just trying to keep people out of the queue. But we are going to give you a tip, and that is skip the regular queue. So when you're going through the Lost Island or the Lost Continent, which is the Atlantis area that we like to call it or where the Mythos restaurant is, that's where they're going to start queuing you into Hagrid's Motorbike. Our recommendation is going to be to skip that. Don't go with everyone else and follow the main queue. Now, if you've got a large group or you want to keep the family together on that ride, then go ahead and do that. Just know you're going to be waiting longer. Our tip is to go right around that, go right into the Hogsmeade area, and you're going to go past the train because that's right where the lockers are. And there are a group of cast members there that are letting people into the queue. And you're going to let them know you are going on single rider. You don't want to wait in that huge long line just to get up there, just to get into the single rider queue. Skip that huge long line, go up there, tell them you want to ride single rider. They should open that up and let you in. Now, of course, if you've got bags and things with you, they are going to force you to go to the lockers first. We recommend always have someone in your group who doesn't want to ride. Uh, that's the easiest way. My wife does not like all these rides, uh, so she'll take our bag and hold that for a little bit or keep things as minimal as possible so that you don't need to worry about it. Now, on Haggard's motorbike, you are not going through metal detectors, so if you have your cell phone or just a couple things, you can keep those in your pocket. I would recommend if you have zipper pockets or a fanny pack or something like that, you do utilize that, though they may make you put the fanny pack into the lockers. But if you're able to get past without going into the lockers, go into that single rider queue. You're going to walk right into the backside of that uh, entrance area. And once you get in there, you're going to go down a flight of stairs and basically you're going to walk straight towards the ride there. And if you are down the flight of stairs, your wait time should be less than 20 minutes. Once you get in there, 
do know that this ride has a tendency because it is a two seater coaster. And we do talk about it in that in our single rider episode, you are going to wait a little bit longer for this one than some of the other ones in single rider, but your wait should be much, much quicker than if you waited in the entire queue. So we do recommend do that. Once you're done with Hagrid's motorbike, that's a fun ride. It's a great ride. Uh, like I said, it breaks down a lot. So you do want to get that done first. Once you're done, we're going to encourage you walk straight across the bridge and go into the Velocicoaster. It's not too far away. You're going to be able to double back here in just a little bit and finish the rest of the Hogwarts area. But you do want to go do the Velocicoaster because that ride will get to an hour long uh, wait or longer during the day. And you want to get there as quick as you can because everyone's gone to Hagrid's motorbike. That's the majority of the queue is backed up right now. So go over to Velocicoaster. And again, they have single rider. And this single rider does move quicker than Hagrid's motorbike. So we do encourage you to go in there. But uh, as you go through, there are lockers uh, for single riders. And those are built into the queue. So they actually make it a lot easier on the single riders over there than they do over at Hagrid's Motorbike where you have to do it outside of the queue. So go do Velocicoaster, knock out that ride. That is my favorite ride in the park. That is by far the best coaster in the park and get that one done. As soon as you're done with Velocicoaster, come right back over that bridge back into the Hogwarts area. And I'm gonna tell you, go now to the Forbidden Journey. So Harry Potter's Forbidden Journey, which is in the Hogwarts castle. Go in there, they do have single rider there as well. Usually the queue early in the morning is going to be less than 10 minutes. So if you get there and it's less than 10 minutes, feel free. If you want to wait in the normal queue, you can. We like to go into do single rider just because you're going to walk right to the front of the line and you're getting on one of the next uh, ride cars right then. So that's a fun ride. Now, I do get motion sickness. And so that's one, depending on how I feel. After the two coasters in the morning, I may skip that one and go into the child swap room and wait for my daughter to come off because it's her favorite ride because she loves Harry Potter. But you can go do that either way. We will have an episode on motion sickness at the parks and how to handle that and the best tips and tricks to get around it. So definitely tune into that if you get motion sick. But Harry Potter's Forbidden Journey, you're going to want to knock that out. Now, when you come out, right in front of you is the Flight of the Hippogriff. That is a small scale coaster. It is, it's a fun, more kid type ride. So if that's one you wanna do, I would say now's the time. Go ahead and knock that one out just because uh, you're gonna get out of this area and you're probably not gonna return to it unless you come back later in the day. So uh, knock out Flight of the Hippogriff. If you're gonna skip that or as soon as you're done, this is the time, grab uh, Butterbeer's our favorite drink. It's got carts all over the Hogwarts area there. So grab a Butterbeer and then walk back across that bridge back over towards uh, Jurassic Park Island. And when you get over there, you've already done the Velocicoaster, so you're gonna skip that. You're gonna go right into the Jurassic Park River Journey ride and go ride that. You're not gonna get super wet on it. You will get splashed. There are a couple parts where you may get sprayed with a little bit of water from some of the dinosaurs, but that's a great ride. But typically people don't come off soaked. So we encourage you definitely do that one. As you come off the Jurassic Park ride, and now's a great time to head over to Kong Skull Island. It's right next to it. This ride queue does go through quite a bit of a dark cave. There are some more intense statues in there where it's a little bit more scary. So if you got little kids, feel free. If you want, you can skip that. When you get on the ride, it is a mixed 3D adventure, live adventure. And in the 3D parts, I, of course, you've got some bugs, you've got some spiders, you've got the dinosaurs fighting King Kong, but it's a fun, fun ride if you want to do that as well. The queue, because the cars hold so many, does move fairly quickly, but typically early in the day, the line's not terribly long. But by mid-afternoon, it's going to go up to 60 minutes. And I would say at that point, it's definitely not worth it. So skip it if it's long. But if you can get in and it's 20 minutes or so because you're ahead of the crowd, then go ahead and do that. Once you're done with Kong Skull Island, we always skip the pterodactyl ride because it only seats two people. It takes forever to get on. The loading and unloading is ridiculous, and I think they only have three or four cars that go around, so we always skip that one. My wife and daughter did it once, and it took well over an hour. And they said it wasn't worth it. So we then go over into Cartoon Island, which is where Popeye, his rides are the Dudley do Right, uh, Ripsaw Falls are the Pluto's Bilge Barge. You are going to get wet on those rides. And these are the rides in the park where you come off drenched, absolutely soaked. So if you do not want to get wet, then I would say skip those and keep going and just walk through there. Usually 
We don't enjoy getting wet, so we'll skip them. There was one day where it was sprinkling out. We had our ponchos out. I was in flip-flops already. So if you're curious about rain in Florida and how to handle it, go back to our top 10 uh, things to bring with you to the parks because we do talk through all that. But I had the poncho on. I had the flip-flops on, and the kids were talking about it. And we said, hey, we're already getting wet. Let's go ride it. And so we did Dudley do Wright's uh, Ripsaw Falls, which was a really fun ride. But we wore ponchos, and we had flip-flops on. We got so wet, it was ridiculous. But having the ponchos helped. One uh, kid had shoes on and their shoes were wet the rest of the day. So keep that in mind. Uh, you don't want to walk around in wet shoes in Orlando. Your feet will get all soggy and wrinkled and it's not any fun. We recommend bring flip-flops with you so you can swap out. But once you're done with the Cartoon Island, you are now going to move into Marvel Island. And there are three rides here. You've got Spider-Man, Dr. Doom's Free Fall, and you've got the Hulk Coaster, which is my second favorite ride at the park. All three of these rides have single rider. So you're going to go single rider on all three. Do not wait in any of the normal queues. They are too long. The ride load and unload takes too long. Our family went on 4th of July with another group. And when we were out there over 4th of July, the wait time for Spider-Man was about 45 minutes. They went into single rider. I told them, go do single rider. And because again, motion sickness, I feel that a little bit. The Spider-Man ride and the Transformers ride do get me a little bit more than some of the others, as does the the Harry Potter Forbidden Journey ride. It makes me feel a little ill. So I skipped that one. And I waited. I held all the bags for this one because my wife wanted to go ride it with their family. And when they went in, she texted me immediately and said, we're getting on. And within five minutes, everybody was coming off. I met them all in the store. So a 45-minute wait time only took them five minutes because they did single rider. So that's why we advertise do single rider. It's going to make your waits a lot quicker. You're going to get through the ride. And though you may be in different cars, the experience is going to be the same, and you're not sitting there talking during the ride anyway. So do single rider. When we came off, they went and did uh, Dr. Doom's free fall. That took about five or 10 minutes. And then we went over to do the Hulk. When you go to the Hulk, we talk about this on our single rider episode, you can see the single rider queue goes up a flight of stairs outside of the building. So you want to look at that set of stairs to see if there's people out there. If there's uh, not very many people out there, they're up on that top landing or if they're all the way inside the door, your wait time is going to be like 10 minutes. So go do single rider on the Hulk, get that ride done. That's a great ride. The queue on that is terrible. It's boring. It's long. It takes forever. So you definitely want to do single rider there. Soon as you're done with the Hulk, you have a decision to make right now, okay? And actually, you've got two decisions to make. So first decision is, do I have little kids with me who want to ride all the Dr. Seuss rides? If so, now's the time. Go over into Seuss land because you've come full circle, and now's the time to do Dr. Seuss land. All the rides over there, the wait times are usually five minutes at the most, just because not many people go into that part of the park, and you're going to be able to do the cat in the hat, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish, and then they also have a carousel. So you can go do the four rides over there. We do recommend the green eggs and ham. That's a great uh, little uh, treat over there as well if you want to grab those, but you can do Seuss Land. If you're not going to do Seuss Land, now's the time to plan to go over to the Universal Studios Park. And you have the decision to make of, do I want to take the Hogwarts Express or do I want to walk over? And I will tell you, I've done the Hogwarts Express probably 20 times. It's cool. It's fun. They, you have a little video show that happens in there. I can tell you that the wait time is usually 30 to 45 minutes. That loading and unloading the cars takes about 10 minutes each time. And that includes yourself when you're getting on and going. The ride itself takes about eight minutes or so to get over to the other park. And then when you come off, then you have to walk all the way back out. So my thought is unless the wait time is less than 10 minutes or about 10 minutes, I'm going to skip it and I'm just going to go right out the front of Islands of Adventure, walk over in front of the Chocolate Emporium, which is one of the best restaurants at City Walk. So listen to our episode on restaurants at City Walk to find out more about the Chocolate Emporium. You're going to walk in front of Hard Rock Cafe and you're going to get over into Universal Studios. By walking around, it's only going to take you about five minutes versus going all the way back into the park, getting on the Hogwarts Express, waiting in the queue there and taking the time. We think it's a lot quicker just to walk over. When you walk over, I'm going to tell you if you're going in the front gate, the next thing you want to do is you want to check the time and you want to check to see when the Bourne stunt uh, show is. And the reason is that is one of the coolest, most advanced technological shows I have seen in my entire life. 
It is so impressive. My wife and daughter were even like, man, that was amazing. That was one of the best shows. So check that Bourne show to see when that is, because that's right in the front of the park, right there when you get in. And if there's a show coming up, we recommend definitely go do that and go knock that out just because it's amazing and it's totally worth it. Once you're done there, you're going to go counterclockwise through this park as well. So we recommend head over to E.T.'s Adventure. E.T. is usually a pretty short wait. And you can usually get right in, but that's a very nostalgic ride for myself. I love the movie. So does my family. Of course, we talked about that earlier. So go do E.T. And then when you come off, you can go towards Simpsons Land. We recommend, again, food-wise, grab a Big Pink. Those are cool uh, donuts. They've also got great food over there in Simpsons Land and a lot of variety of food. And we'll talk about that on our food episode. But if you want to do the Simpsons ride, you can. Again, that's one that makes me motion sick. So I skipped that one. But then after that, we go back and do Men in Black Alien Attack. That one also has a single rider line. That single rider line is very quick. In fact, the longest I've ever had to wait in it is about five minutes. Uh, So we do recommend go do Alien Attack through single rider. And then once you're done with that, now you're going to go over into Diagon Alley. Uh, You're going to do this part of the Harry Potter world. And there is only one ride in there, and that is Escape from Gringotts. That is a must ride. And that one also has single rider. So we're going to tell you, go do single rider there. In fact, on our last trip over there to Universal, my daughter and I did that ride a couple times. And one time when we went into single rider, we walked right on. We walked all the way through right up the steps. And we were the next two people in line. And they were loading cars right then and took us onto two different cars. And we were able to ride it immediately without any weight at all. Single rider is definitely the way to go on Escape from Gringotts. We then tell you, grab another butterbeer because you're going to want another one, Explore that area. You've got Nocturne Alley. You've got Diagon Alley. Check out all the stores there. But when you come out of the Hogwarts area, your next area over there is going to be the Fast and Furious ride. You have Transformers. Transformers also has a single rider queue. So do that just like the Spider-Man ride. And then once you're done with that, you've got uh, the Minions. You've got Jimmy Fallon's Escape from New York and the Rip uh, Rocket roller coaster up there. And you're going to knock those out. Once you're done with all that, it's probably now late afternoon. You've probably used up the majority of your day, but you were able to pretty much ride every single ride in the park. Hopefully you didn't have too long of a wait time. I will say things like uh, Fast and Furious, if it's more than about 30 minutes, we're going to skip that ride. It's just you're on uh, a big bus and you're watching them race and you're trying to escape bad guys. It's a pretty quick little ride there. But for the most part, you've done the entire park. If there are other shows you want to see, we encourage you. There's the Animal Actor Show. That's a good one. The horror makeup in, in a special effects show is really cool. Uh, you can see that as well, so check out the show times. And then they've always got different things happening in the Harry Potter land. So if you've done all of Universal Studios and there is still time and you want to ride more, we have for you our I Can Do This All Day tip of the day. Now is a great time to go back and do the Um, Hogwarts Express back over to Islands of Adventure. And the reason is later in the day, fewer people are doing it. They're done for the day. They're leaving out of the front of the park. That line gets shorter as the day goes on. So it's a great time to do it at that point in the day if you want to go back to Islands of Adventure and ride some more. I will say throughout the Universal Orlando Park, there are tons of great foods. So definitely check out our food episode. You're going to want to get all those different sweets and treats and eat all of those. We're also going to tell you the best places to stop and eat as you're trying to get through your day. Um, Universal is very different than Disney where you're not doing a lot of reservations. There are only a couple of restaurants that take reservations. We'll talk about that more on that dining episode. But for the most part, you're going to be doing quick service and carts over at Universal just to keep going through your day so you can knock out both parks, but totally able to do in one day. We do it every single time that we go. Those are our strategies for handling Universal Orlando. We hope you have a magical vacation. Again, please click subscribe or support us over at Patreon and join us for our next episodes out on the West Coast, out in Anaheim. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.